business, gives you a good move of minus 7.8%, call it, call it 8%. That's wave four. What about wave four under positive underlying trend conditions? It gives you only a slightly lower price move, uh, which is minus 6.4%. So possibly you might want to consider trading wave four even under posit positive underlying trend conditions. Okay, um, what about um, under uh, neutral um, underlying trend conditions? Well, there are the relative figures for the neutral underlying trend conditions. So these are the statistics. So what I am showing you is uh, basically uh, a way of understanding the market that you are trading through looking at the, the, sh the wave shape statistics that Sentient Trader calculates automatically and provides for you. Now, the next way of uh, having a look or understanding your um, market that you're trading is to build a trading history. I'm not going to dwell on that process because we had a trader chat all about building trading history. But um, in, in that uh, trader chat, I pointed out that building a trading history in Sentient Trader is all about um, understanding the character of the market that you're trading. It's not about proving to yourself uh, whether the system works or not. It's not about um, seeing how you would have performed. It's about revealing the character. It's a very important thing to understand. And uh, so let's have a look in some detail at, um, at that now. The first thing that's really important to understand is that you must use a full matrix. I spoke about that in the previous trader chat. If you don't understand that, um, go take a look at our trader chat about um, sentient trading matrices, um, where I explain what a full matrix is. And um, um, then um, let's uh, skip out of this uh, PowerPoint once again and go back to um, uh, Sentient Trader. And let's just uh, make sure that you're seeing that when I switch switch applications. I think you are. Um, there we go. Here's the same uh, the same chart of the S&P 500, and I have built a trading history, which we're not seeing now because I've got trading switched off. Let me turn trading on. There is our trading history, and if we go to Tools, uh, View Trade Reports, then um, on our trade reports, if we scroll down, you will see we find all kinds of sentient wave information. Sentient wave trades, sentient wave bear type, sentient wave three by four relationships, and previous sentient wave, previous sentient waves. So um, uh, let's uh, go back to the PowerPoint and uh, quickly go through uh, each one of those. The first one uh, uh, has to do with sentient wave trades. Now, why are we doing this? What we've done is that we have built a completely hypothetical and artificial trading history using a full matrix, which means that we are trading every possible one of the four waves, wave one, two, three, and four, under every one of the possible um, uh, underlying trend conditions. So we're trading wave one, two, three, and four under negative zero and positive underlying trend conditions. The results of that are shown to you here uh, um, in the sentient wave trade section. Um, Turn on my whiteboard again so that I can uh, highlight a few uh, highlight a few points for you. And um, so here is wave one under a negative underlying trend. Now we would expect under a negative underlying trend when the longer cycles are pressing down upon the market, we would expect a wave one trade, which is a bullish trade, an upward trade. Here's a reminder of what these four legs are. That's wave one. That's um, wave two that's wave three, that's wave four, we'd expect wave one over here to um, not make money under negative underlying trend conditions because under negative underlying trend conditions, the longer cycles are pushing the market downwards. So as you can see, wave one under negative underlying trend conditions, I hope you can read that, actually lost $14,500 roughly. Okay, so that makes sense. Under zero or neutral underlying trend conditions, wave one proved to be very profitable. It made $66,000, give or take a few hundred. And under positive underlying trend conditions, wave one did even better. It made $74,500. Now, what are we seeing here? What we're seeing is that um, trading the separate waves, waves one, two, three, and four, um, is greatly affected by, by the underlying trend. If the underlying trend is positive, then we make money out of our bullish trades, wave one and wave three, as you can see. But we lose money out of our bearish trades, wave two, over there, and wave four. Under neutral underlying trend conditions, it's pretty much anybody's guess what's going to happen. So, um, uh, um, so as you can see, uh, wave one made money, wave two made money, made wave two made money, wave three lost money, and wave four lost money. 
And uh, under negative underlying trend conditions, we expect to lose money on our bullish trades, as we did. We lost money on wave one and on wave three, and we expect to make money on our bullish trades. That is very important information. Now, it's also important that uh, the information that you glean from here reflects what is expected logically. In other words, wave one and wave three should lose money under, neg under negative underlying trend conditions and make money under positive underlying trend conditions. Why? Because under positive underlying trend conditions, the longer cycles are pushing the market up. So our bullish trades, which are, which are uh, waves one and wave three over there, uh, those are our bullish waves. We expect them to make more money when the other cycles are pushing the market up. And they do, as you can see in this, in this trading history. Um, Similarly, under negative underlying trend conditions, we expect our bearish waves, wave two over here and wave four over here, to uh, make money as they did. There, they made money, made money. Uh, 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 whereas um, uh, we expect the uh, bullish um, waves, waves one and three, to lose money as they did over there. Okay, that's what I call uh, a sort of logical confirmation of the fact that your analysis is correct. If these figures are wrong, what does it mean? Does it mean that your trading is wrong? No. It all boils down to the phasing analysis, and I'm going to emphasize that point again later. Everything boils down to the phasing analysis. If, um, if you get results where you're making huge profits on negative underlying trend in wave one, then it means the chances are that your phasing analysis is faulty because your trading is all done as a result of your phasing analysis. It's a very important point. Okay, um, let's have a look at what other information we can glean from... Um, from uh, trading, and uh, that is uh, the next section, which is called sentient wave bear types. Okay, um, now let me just uh, go back. I wonder how I can go back in this PowerPoint demonstration to explain. No, in fact, I'll, I'll use the whiteboard to explain what a bear type is. And um, all right, um, what is a bear type? Um, when you move from a bull wave, which moves up, there's a bull wave moving up, into a bear wave moving down. Okay? Um, that is uh, start defined by the start of the, of, of the cycle that you're trading. And uh, the end of the, um, at the end of the bear wave, um, the end of the move down is defined by either the intermediate trough Okay, if it's a wave two, or if it's a wave four by the final trough. Okay, nevertheless, because there are shorter cycles that are happening shorter than the cycle that you are trading, you can break um, this section down into, and let me uh, draw diamonds here to um, show, show to you the way that you're used to seeing it with diamonds. Um, you can break it down into uh, much shorter cycles. Okay, there we go. Notice that if you look two cycles below your trading cycle over here, that's two cycles below your trading cycle, then you can divide the distance um, between um, the first trough and the, and the next trough into four pieces, okay, uh, based on those troughs. So there's the first one. Now I'm going to try and sort of draw a dotted line, and there's the dotted line. So depending on where those troughs take place, um, we have divided this into four pieces. Now, you are looking at, um, you're considering a bearish wave, in other words, either a wave two or a wave four. The question is, where did that wave start? It started at the peak, of course, uh, following the previous bullish wave. So the question is, where was that peak in terms of these four uh, um, cycles, uh, cycle troughs, two cycles down? If that peak occurred um, uh, over, over here, then that would be called a peak one because the peak occurred in the first quarter of the, of the, of the cycle. Okay? If it occurred, um, I'm struggling just to find places I can draw. There we go. If it occurred in the second quarter, that would be called a peak two. Third quarter is a peak three. And final quarter is a peak four. So this cycle I've drawn here, this um, move down, which I'm calling a wave two, uh, is is a uh, what what type uh, what bear type is it? It is a peak three, okay, peak 
3. Why? Because the peak, which is over here, occurs in the third quarter. 1, 2, 3. So it's a peak 3. That's what a bear type is. So you get, um, you get wave 2s and wave 4s, um, uh, um, or, uh, both have bear types, depending on where the peak occurs prior to the, um, uh, prior to the wave. Okay, um, so let's just have a look at this. I won't dwell on it too much, but you can see here that um, uh, uh, Sentient Trader has broken down your trading statistics. So it can identify for you that a wave four, which um, um, had a peak one, in other words, a very early peak, uh, proved to be a very profitable wave. Okay, um, none of the other peaks really featured under negative underlying trend. But under positive underlying trend, uh, you get a different picture. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to dwell in too much detail, um, but those are the statistics that are available to you in terms of um, um, how you would have succeeded trading various different bear types. Okay, um, let's move on to the uh, next statistic, um, which is the wave, sentient wave three by four relationships. So uh, let me explain that as well and um, use the whiteboard. What is a three by four relationship? Well, here we have wave one, there we have wave two, there we have wave three, there we have wave four. Now, um, three below one, you can see three below one, means that wave three starts below wave one. Is that possible? Yes, absolutely. Um, because this is also a valid cycle shape, and this wave three, started below wave one. There's wave one and there's wave three. Um, this is a three above one. Wave three starts above wave one. Similarly, uh, wave four um, above two means that wave four um, starts, the peak starts above wave two. There's the start of wave two. Okay, so that's four above two. Wave four over here, the peak is above the start of wave two. Uh, whereas here, wave four, the peak uh, preceding wave four is below the peak of um, uh, uh, start preceding wave two. Okay, so that's what a th uh, uh, sentient wave three by four relationship is. And um, yet again, you will see that we have here lots of information. Um, uh, you will notice that um, uh, wave three um, below starts, in other words, trading uh, with a negative underlying trend, trading a wave three with a negative underlying trend where wave three was below the um, uh, start of the pattern, the, the start of prior to wave one, um, was, was a devastatingly bad trade to make. Um, there were 13 trades that were made, only 15% of them were winning trades, and you lost $24,000 by making trades. And that is, um, remember, a wave three trade that started below wave one. So it makes logical sense. Um, if you're about to enter a wave three trade, uh, but you are below the start of the pattern at wave one, then, uh, uh, and you have a negative underlying trend, then uh, you probably shouldn't be taking that trade. Simple as that. Okay. Um, I, I won't give any more details. There's lots of information in there. Um, uh, Finally, let's move on to uh, the, the, the last uh, piece of information that is available, and that is what is called previous sentient waves. Okay, that is uh, really very simple. Um, when you're about to take a trade, um, whether it's a, a wave